Hey guys and girls, uh, I know it's been a while. I haven't really been putting much on here, and that's because I've been kind of busy. Um, actually, been a lot busy. So, um, thought I would just uh, you know keep you updated and uh, show you the latest uh, small project I'm working on. Uh, I actually got this guy uh, a couple days ago, and this is a an M1 Garand uh, bayonet, pretty old, pretty old. Uh, this is not a Korean War era, as far as I know. Um, it's got some schmutz on the handle there, looks like it was burned on. Uh, also, the blade has a little bit of uh, rusting and, and junk on it. Uh, it's not sharp by any means, uh, which is probably good for me. Uh, but what I thought I'd do is try to bring this back to life at least a little bit. Now, I know that restoring these things tends to take away from their value. Uh, but this is, for me, uh, it's just something that I'm keeping in my collection to go with my Garan. Um, but I want to show you some things. that I, I did run some flits over this real quick to get some of the crust off of it. But I'm going to set it down and um, try to show you some of the other... Uh, things that I found on this that I thought were pretty cool. So, stick around. Alright, so again, uh, this is our bayonet. And, oddly enough, that still works. Let's see if I can get it to... This is the release that actually lets you take it out of the scabbard. It's barely moving, which tells me that that spring is probably all crudded up. But it does operate. There's so much pitting on this. We're not going to be able to ever make this showroom piece. But I'd like to at least get all this gunk off. And you can see right here, that's actually from the scabbard. So what I'm thinking is that maybe the this was in a fire or something, and the scabbard maybe melted to this uh, or something along those lines. Although the scales themselves don't look melted. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but either way, we're probably just going to chip those off and replace them as well. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to get that stuff off of there and keep these in one piece. But what I thought was pretty cool is just initially you can see the, the pins there. What I thought was cool was that this is an American fork and hoe. Uh, and it looks like... And I, I guess I'll tell once I give this a, a dip, but it says U.S. right there. There's your bursting bomb. Um, there's no date on this, which is kind of interesting. Usually there's some kind of date there. So what I'm going to do is try to get these grips off. Um, I've sprayed this down with WD-40 and that doesn't look like it wants to, doesn't look like it wants to give so we'll see what we can see but I what I'm going to do is give this a vinegar bath um, for a couple days and see what I can raise um, I do have some evapor rust that I may use as well. So first things first, we're going to try and get these off and strip it down. I'll pull that spring out, the little arm and that button. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much all there is to this. These are these are pretty simple inside. So wish me luck. I'll try to get this off and hopefully I'll be able to keep you guys updated um, as I go. So thanks for watching. And uh, I don't know if there'll be a part two or, or if I'll just continue this. But either way, uh, see you guys in a while. Bye. All right. So I was able to just run a screwdriver right along here. And that actually popped up this whatever this is. I have no idea. Um, but it allowed me to get to the back of that pin. So I'm going to take some. WD-40. And 
and try and let that run down in those threads. I'll do the same thing on this side. And while we're at it, I'll try to get some on the inside there. And we're just going to let that sit for a while. All right, so we let this soak for a while. And I was able to basically get this whole thing impregnated with uh, WD-40. I even put some Rust Buster on there. Uh, and it's just not coming out. I was trying to save these scales. As you can see, I got a lot of whatever that stuff was off of there. Uh, the issue, though... I turned it over, so you got some of that crap off, you can see this scale is actually broken right here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. So it's not looking good, and I think what's going to happen now at this point is I'm just going to um, chalk this side up because there's no way, there's, there you go, there's no way I'm going to be able to fix that. I don't think uh, so what I may do is just go ahead and drill this out from the back just enough to get off of those threads uh, and then pull this off as one piece and then just have to replace this set right here I do have another set of scales that I can use I was just trying to save these if I could but it looks like that's where we're gonna be with that um, Again, there's no year of manufacture on here that I can see. That F is really faint in the middle. And you can see the US and the bursting bomb there. Usually there's a date on the back, but I don't see one. And it could be that it's all crustified, and I'm not seeing it, or maybe there isn't one. Um, and if anybody can help me out here with a date, or how to date this, uh, I'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, it looks like, you know, one of those those cut down ones. I mean, I could be wrong, but who knows? Would that make it a 1905? I don't know. So if anybody knows, let me know. I'd greatly appreciate it. But what I'm going to do now, I think, is just try to drill this out from the back. At least try to save this one, but I think this one's going to be a lost cause. So, I'll let you know how I make out. Okay, so we back drilled uh, the, that screw. And as you can see, this is coming off in two pieces instead of one. So, I mean, it kind of is what it is, unfortunately. That's the, uh, there's the arm. You got your spring in there. So we'll pop all of this out. I'll pop this guy out from the back because he is not moving. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wash this all down with, uh, I think we'll use some Windex and dry it up real good. And then uh, we're going to give it a bath, uh, like I said, in either vinegar uh, or vapor rust. I'm leaning more towards the vapor rust because I think it'll be more aggressive. Uh, we'll let that sit for a few days, uh, and then we'll come back. We'll revisit it. We'll see if anything came off, and then we're going to start. I think just trying to clean some of this stuff up. So stick around for part two or three. Eh? I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this. So either way, um, yeah, stay tuned.
see what happens. So we have been soaking our bayonet in vapor rust. Now we did soak it in vinegar for about two, three hours. That did seem to at least start to break things free. This, uh, as you can see, has been getting pretty dirty. But a lot of that rust is, in fact, lifting off. Now I did take a brass brush to this earlier after it came out of the vinegar and I washed a lot off. This stuff is getting real viscous. Um, it actually pours like water right out of the bottle. So it's getting a little thicker. Uh, and that may be because of the particles that are being left behind. But as you can see, the stuff is just bleh. This was crystal clear <laughs> when we put this in about four or five hours ago. And it looks like it's lifting a lot of this out. So if I leave this in here for a couple few days, um, it should really get to that, that stuff there. And the nice part is um, a lot of this, what I thought was pitting here, is this is actually on top. So I haven't actually seen anything really in the metal so much as it's been on top. Um, I think a lot of this might also be the original parking on it. So uh, we're just gonna we're gonna let this go a little more. Now, according to the directions here, this uh, ev evapor rust, vapor rust, however you want to say it. Um, you can actually reuse this stuff uh, up to a point and then it becomes no good but so we're gonna lay that in there another four or five hours we'll flip it in the morning um, and we'll let that sit all day then we'll flip it again then we'll let it you know sit and then we'll flip it again we're gonna do this about two or three days um, just to see how much of that we can break loose I mean this is 70 plus years of gunk on there um, would be my guess so coming along coming along this stuff is expensive by the by uh, I think this was like almost 20 bucks for this uh, quart uh, my suggestion would be if you're gonna get this get a gallon spend a little bit more um, like I said, you can reuse it up to a point. I think it'll tell you that in there as well. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So, you can get this off of Amazon. I think you can probably grab it in the store. Um, but we're using a combination of that and some HF, WTF, brass, brass, brass brushes. Make sure if you're going to do this, you use brass, not steel. Um, that steel to give you an idea because if you use steel on this stuff you're going to be gouging the metal and we definitely don't want to do that we just want to get the crap off of the top all right so that's where we are for now and um, next time I check back hopefully we'll have something more to show see you guys all right just an update uh, we just took this out and cleaned it off uh, we had it sitting in a vapor rust for about three, four days. Uh, I did run a bronze, aren't bronze, a brass wheel over it. So that's what that little gold color is. I guess it's just some of the brass wearing off onto the metal. And for the most part, we have some pitting there, but for the most part, this stuff here is the old park that's on it. So I may try to soak it in something else to get some more of that off. I don't want to go too harsh of an acid like muriatic acid or something because I don't want to eat the metal but I would like to get all of that off and then possibly have this all reparked uh, and then we'll go ahead and put the new scales on I, I do want to get rid of this right here but for the most part doesn't look too bad Maybe we'll touch that edge up a little bit But it is coming together nicely so far. 
So, stay tuned. So here we have a side-by-side -side comparison. This is obviously the original. This is a repro. Um, excuse me, Katie. Dogs going nanners outside. Um, yes, this is the real one. Thank you. So I tried to do a real quick fit to see if this would fit on here. Um, there's just ever so slight variation uh, between the two that this one, I think, sits a little further down. And because of that, it pushes the through screw um, down. <clears throat> and also there's a shoulder on this screw where there isn't one on this one. Um, and so this is a really tight fit in here, but it's just ever so, so slow. So like this actually sits a little bit, I guess, further down than this one does and it pushes that that scale down and it just looks really wonky so i'll just wait until the other uh, set of scales are here and we'll go ahead and put it on but i i do want to get this uh-huh i do want to get this whole thing uh reparked uh, so what we're going to do is just put it in uh some cotton uh and we'll stick it up in the, in the closet there to keep everything safe and all the bits and pieces uh, together. I don't have the through screw for this anymore. Um, it did come out with the uh, scales. It was so frozen together. So part of the reason that I have to replace that, I apologize for the doggo in the background. Uh, but this is the Repro. This thing was only like 30 bucks, and it is fairly sharp. And it comes with a reproduction uh, scabbard as well. Um, if we can get a good shot at that, but it's got the same, basically the same marks. So that would be the original design. I think the next one was modified and it sat further down or something like that. And it went through a bunch of changes, but it's got the drip hole and all that. So this, not bad for, uh, I guess, if you wanted to do a reenactment or you just wanted to fill the end of your grand, but. Yep, kind of where we are. So, again, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned. All right, guys, so just a quick follow up here. Um, this is the American Fork and Hoe. Uh, we went ahead and threw our other scales on it. I also switched out the action bar. I found that the uh, release was a little bit thicker. Uh, on the original and so these scales wouldn't uh, work with that very well so uh, I just switched it out for a different action bar I call it an action bar but it's, it's the release so let's see if we can ah, without cutting myself here you can see that functions perfectly now uh, if you remember this thing was covered in poo -poo -caca. Uh we've cleaned it off uh, considerably well. There's still a little bit of brass from the uh, bristles, uh, but as far as pitting and stuff like that, um, I think all of this is just old park, which is nice. There is some, and I don't know if I can pick up on this, there is some right about here. Unfortunately, can't do much about that. But overall, I think it uh, cleaned up rather well. And so the next step is um, just going to probably have it reparked. Again, uh, this is not for resale or anything like that. This is for my collection. Um, I have a few other bayonets as well. But I think this one could benefit from being touched up a little bit. Um, and I typically wouldn't park it, except that that pitting is bothering me a little bit, and I don't want that to suffer anymore. So I think parking is probably the best way to go with that. So, there you have it. Um, thanks for watching.